Hello, my name is Dr. Omende. We continue our discussion on the upper GIT where we were discussing the esophagus stomach. So we are using this uh, PowerPoint by SDU. So um, the, to wind up on the anatomy of the esophagus, you need to know that the esophagus has three parts. So when you're discussing the anatomy of the esophagus, you need to put this into consideration. So the cervical part begins from the lower margin of cricoid cartilage, that's at C6, to the lower down of T1. Okay, so that's the cervical part. Then the thoracic part begins from the thoracic inlet, which is at vertebral level T1, to the um, inferior portion of the thorax. So this thoracic part of the is where the esophagus passes through the esophageal hair to the diaphragm. And this is it. And remember, other structures that use this esophageal hiatus include the snub and the left streak artery so those are the contents of the esophageal hiatus of the diaphragm so the esophagus this nerve and left streak artery branches of the left gut artery then the abdominal part of the esophagus they begin from now the esophage, uh, esophageal hiatus of the diaphragm at t10 and at the cardia of the stomach at t11 so those are the visions of the esophagus c6 to t1 t1 to t10 t10 to t11 Then histologic, this is what we discussed, that the esophagus has a mucosa. The mucosa has three parts, stratified, squamous, paracaratinized epithelium, followed by mina papi, uh, pap, uh, propria and muscularis mucosa made up of smooth mouse cells. Then after mucosa, you get to the submucosa made up of collagen, elastic fibers, and neurovascular stress. Then you get muscle there where you have inner, longitudinal, and outer circular muscles, so the muscularis externa. And remember, we said the upper third is skeletal, the third is smooth, and the middle is mixed. Then lastly, you have your adventitia or serosa, which is um, simple squamous epithelium and neurovascular structures are contained in this layer. So briefly on the embryology of the esophagus remember the esophagus is from the foregut so it develops from the foregut immediately codal the pharynx so initially the esophagus is short but later on it lengthens rapidly due to the descent of the heart and growth of the lungs so as the heart is descending and the lungs are growing the esophagus now lengthens rapidly so it reaches final length relative length at seven weeks now, we have what you call a respiratory diverticulum. This respiratory diverticulum, or lung bud, gives rise to the lungs and the trachea. And they usually grow from the vent wall of the esophagus, where the esophagus borders the pharyngeal gut. So, the respiratory diverticulum is gradually partitioned by the tracheoesophageal septum. So, you form a respiratory primum on the anterior aspect and the esophagus posterior. So what we mean, you have a respiratory diverticulum here and you have your tracheoesophageal septum forming that's coming to now divide this diverticulum. So you'll have the anterior um, that will form the trachea and eventually the lung buds that will be the lungs. Then the tracheoesophageal septum closes uh, and the posterior portion will form the esophagus. So you have your pharynx and esophagus from the posterior portion and the and lung buds from the anterior portion. So it's this tracheoesophageal septum that separates the respiratory diverticulum from the remaining uh, of the foregut. So then we discuss the anatomy of the stomach. The stomach is J-shaped. Yeah, it's J in shape, and it's a hollow muscular organ that is located under the diaphragm. So it's an abdominal organ. It's located in the epigastric region. Remember, nine regions of the uh, abdomen. So it's in the gastric region. And the upper larger portion, which is also called the fundus, is in the upper left quadrant of the abdomen. So the fundus of the stomach is in the upper left quadrant of the abdomen. So the entrance of the stomach is at the esophageal junction. And we have what you call the cardiac sphincter at this junction. So cardiac sphincter is at the esophageal junction, which is the entrance of the stomach from the esophagus. Then below, the stomach is continuous with the duodenum at the pyloric sphincter. So we have major parts of the stomach, the upper larger portion, which is the fundus, then you get to the body and the lower portion where you have the antrum. And some people call uh, introduce a fourth area that's at the entrance of the stomach, which is the cardia. So there's cardia, fundus, which is the upper portion, then body, which is middle, and the antrum, which is the lower portion. So the cardia um, is at the entrance of the stomach. So it contains mucus secreting glands, 
and this gland less coiled than the glands in the antrum. And the pits of these mucus secreting glands are shorter than the um, the pyloric uh, uh, than the pits in the pylori and the antrum, so the antropyloric pits. So the, the you have mucus secreting glands. The glands are less coiled, and they are shorter. Then we go to the fundus and the body of the stomach. So these two regions have straight tubular glands. They have straight tubular glands, and muscularis mucosa contains um, extend uh, between the glands from cis. So the glands in the fundus and the body secrete gastric juices and also secrete mucus, which is protective. Then the final portion of the stomach is the pylorus. So the pylorus called glands, but the glands are branched. Remember from the first and body, the glands straight and tubular. To get to the pylorus, they are now branched and open into deep irregular pits. So this pylorus also has mucus secreting cells. And remember, we need mucus to lubricate and also to protect the entrance of the duodenum from the acidic um, contents of the stomach. Then in the pylorus, you also have G cells. G cells are endocrine cells. They usually secrete gastrin. So pylorus has mucus and G cells that secrete uh, gastrin. So this is the esophagus, gastroesophageal junction with the cardiac sphincter. So this is the cardiac region. This is the fundus, which is the upper portion, then the body before you get to the um, pyloric antrum. And this is where you have your pyloric um, sphincter. So this is lesser curvature of the stomach where lesser omentum attaches. And this is the greater curvature of the stomach for greater omentum. So as you can see, this is the anatomy of the stomach, so the fundus, the body, yeah, the pylorus, the pyloric sphincter. This is the greater curvature, lesser curvature. You can appreciate internally that the mucosa is thrown into folds, which we call the rumen. Now, this image just shows you the blood supply of the stomach, that you have left gastric artery and right gastric artery supplying the lesser curvature. And this left gastric artery is cut from celiac trunk, while the right gastric artery is a branch from common hepatic artery. Then the greater curvature is supplied by um, left gastroepiploic artery from splenic artery and gastroepiploic artery. You can see right epiploic artery here. Okay. And then the posterior portion is supplied by anterior gastric and short gastric vessels coming from splenic artery. So what are the relations of the stomach? Until to the stomach, you have the left lobe of the liver on the right side. Then on the left portion anterior to the stomach you have the diaphragm so you have left lobe of liver and the diaphragm on the anterior part you also have the anterior abdominal wall then posteriorly what structures are posterior to the stomach these are structures that form the stomach bed so you can be asked so as to list the structure posterior to the stomach or the structures on the stomach bed so these include the pancreas the left kidney and the left suprarenal gland sitting on top of it. This is the left kidney and left suprarenal gland. This is the pancreas. This is the stomach which has been reflected away to the structures on the stomach bed or posterior to the stomach. So you have the pancreas, left kidney, left suprarenal gland. Then you have the spleen on the upper portion. And you also have the transverse colon and transverse mesocolon. You have the splenic vessels. You can appreciate the splenic artery and vein. Um, on the posterior superior border of the pancreas. So those are the structures on the stomach bed. The pancreas, splenic and veins, left kidney, left suprarenal, the spleen, transverse colon, and transverse mesocolon. What arteries supply the, the stomach? So you have mainly left and right gastric arteries on the lesser curvature. So the left gastric is celiac trunk. You can appreciate celiac trunk here. So this is your left gastric artery from celiac trunk. And right gastric artery is usually from hepatic proper artery. Now, celiac trunk gives three arteries. Left gastric, splenic, and common hepatic. Then common hepatic will give hepatic proper, which will give the right gastric artery. So left gastric and right gastric supply the lesser culture. Then... Um, so you need to know left gastric from celiac trunk and right gastric is from hepatic proper artery. Then uh, towards the greater curvature, you have the left gastroepiploic and right gastroepiploic. Where do these vessels come from? Right gastroepiploic is from duodenal artery. Right gastroepiploic is from gastroduodenal artery, while the left gastroepiploic is from splenic artery. And remember, splenic artery is from celiac trunk. 
So the right gastric flow from gastrodrogo and the left is from um, splenic. So this celiac trunk gives left gastric to the lesser curvature, the upper portion of the lesser curvature. It gives splenic that will give left gastric people supply upper part of the greater curvature. And celiac trunk gives common hepatic. So it usually happens. The common hepatic will give gastroduodenal. After giving gastroduodenal, common hepatic is now called hepatic artery proper. So it's this hepatic artery proper that will give right gastric to supply lower portion of the lesser curvature of the stomach. Yeah, so right gastric come from hepatic artery proper. Hepatic artery proper is continuum of common hepatic after it has given gastroduodenal. And it's this gastroduodenal that gives right gastroloic supplying the lower portions of the greater curvature. Then we have short gastric trees. Short gastric arteries come from the splenic. So splenic will give three vessels to the stomach, the left gastroepiploic, short gastric, and posterior gastric. So short gastric are from splenic artery, and they pass through the gastrosplenic ligament to supply the fund of the stomach. So short gastric supply the fundus of the stomach. Then we have posterior gastric, which also come from splenic. So splenic give left gastroepiploic, short gastric, and posterior gastric. And these ones pass through gastrophrenic ligament. Short gastric will pass through gastrosplenic ligament, while posterior gastric pass through gastrophrenic ligament to supply the posterior wall and the fundus of the stomach. What's the venous drainage of the stomach? So again, the veins will correspond with the arteries. So the left gastric and right gastric veins on the lesser cavity, left gastric and right gastric, this will drain directly into the port vein. Then you have left gastroepiploic and right gastroepiploic that drain into the splenic vein. Remember, port vein is formed by the union of splenic vein and superior mesentic vein. So together they form portal vein. So this is um, <clears throat> the portal vein that will be formed by superior mesenteric and, and splenic vein. So you have left gastric veins and right gastric drain into two vein, while left gastroepiploic and short gastric will drain into um, hepatic two vein and uh, via the splenic vein. So the first drain into splenic vein, or they drain into hepatic portal vein. Remember, left gastroepiploic artery was from splenic artery. So left gastroepiploic vein will drain into splenic vein. Short gastric also from splenic artery. So they will drain into splenic vein before splenic vein joins superior arteric vein to form the vein. Then we have gastroepiploic artery. Right gastroepiploic artery was from gastroduodenal. So right gastroepiploic veins will drain into superior mesenteric vein. And superior mesenteric vein and splenic vein together portal vein. So, what's the lymphatic drainage of the stomach? Again, this will correspond. You have gastric and right gastric nodes, okay, that finally drain into sac nodes. So, these are on the left curvature. Then, on the curvature, you have right and left and right gastroepiploic or gastroemental lymph nodes that will drain into um, splenic. So, the left gastroepiploic will drain into splenic lymph nodes, and the right gastroepiploic will drain into subpyloric nodes. Then we have suprapyloric and subpyloric lymph nodes. So suprapyloric receive lymphatics from the pyloric pylorus of the stomach and then drain into celiac nodes. Splenic lymph nodes also drain the stomach and they will mainly drain the first of the stomach and the posterior portion of the stomach. Finally, from splenic nodes, this lymphatic also carry to the celiac lymph nodes. What's the nerve supply of the stomach? The parasympathetic is vagus. So you have left and right vagus that will form anterior and posterior vagal trunks to supply the anterior and posterior parts of the stomach. So anterior vagal trunk divide into anterior gastric and hepatic arteries. So and to the anterior to the stomach and the liver, while posterior vagal trunks will divide into posterior gastric and celiac branches. So these are usually um fan out from the lesser curvature and forms across foot then sympathetic innervation are mainly from cilia ganglia and these are fibers from thoracic segments t5 to lumbar one t5 to l1 from cilia ganglia so that's what you see that's a liver that's a stomach gallbladder greater momentum and these are the uh, blood vessels to the stomach. So left gastric, common hepatic, splenic artery, gastroduodenal artery, 
proper 